So here we have um, two charges, X and Y, on insulated stands. Um, don't get too hooked up on these words, guys. Like They're always going to say insulated stands. It doesn't mean anything for us. Okay, I'll place 10 centimeters apart. They give us the charges. Great stuff. So it says, draw the electric field pattern around them. So I, look, I showed you guys this a little bit the other day. Um, but the way it works is the following. If you have something that is positive, then the um, electric field lines will always point away from that one. So like this. Okay. And if you have something that is negative, then the electric field lines will always point towards it. Like that. Okay, so um, yeah, that's pretty much what we need to understand. So when they ask us to draw the electric field pattern between a negative charge and a positive charge, all we do is we draw two circles, okay? And we're just gonna put the negative one there and the positive one there. And then we're gonna draw the arrow going from the positive to the negative, so something like that, because electricity always flows out of the positive and towards the negative, well, not the electricity, but the electric field pattern. And then we're going to draw arrows going like that. Something like that. And then uh, maybe we can do another one. And then we can also show maybe one or two going away in another direction like that. And then we can show some random ones entering like that. Okay, so we're pretty much just showing that it goes from the positive to the negative. Not that important, really. They'll maybe ask you this. Maybe, maybe not, though. Okay, so it says 7.2.2, calculate the magnitude of the force that X exerts on Y. Now, guys, when they say the force that X exerts on Y, they're just trying to be fancy. It actually, they could have just said calculate the force between the two charges because we know, according to Newton's third law that if x exerts a force on y then of course y is also going to exert a force on x so don't get too worried when they say x on y it they could have just said the force okay so guys they said calculate the force uh in your test tomorrow please make sure that when they say this word does it either say electrostatic force or does it say electrostatic field strength um or the elect sorry, the electric field strength or something like that. If they're talking about the electric field strength, then you're going to use the E formula. And if they talk about the force, then you're going to use the F formula. Okay, so this one, they're talking about the force. And so we're just going to say F equals to K Q over Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now, remember that K is a constant of 9 times 10 to the power of 9. And some learners always ask me, what units must we use in this chapter? Uh, must we use kilometers? Must we use centimeters? Must we use meters? And I have a very nice suggestion for you guys. When they give you the formula sheet, um, in the exam, you know, on the front page of the formula sheet, there's that table that has all of these constants like G, um, mass of the earth, radius of the earth, um, capital G, uh, Planck's constant. They're also going to give you K, obviously. Now, when you look at that constant, I want you to look at the units that they are using. And what you'll see there is you'll see there'll be like a Newton, there'll be an M somewhere, and there'll be a C somewhere. And that unit, th that, that there can tell you exactly what units you have to use. It tells you that the force is measured in Newtons. It tells you that the distance is measured in meters. And it tells you that we're going to work in Coulomb. Okay, and you can use that for any of the constants. It will help you to remember, do we use kilometers? Do we use meters? What is going on with that, with this type of formula? Okay, so let's move on. So now we're just going to go fill everything in. Oh, and then one more thing, guys. I did show you this the other day, but please remember to convert these into coulombs. Now, they could ask you millicoulomb, microcoulomb, nanocoulomb, and picocoulomb. And you need to know how to convert each and, one, each and every one of those into coulomb. 
So the way that you do that is if for this one, you multiply by 10 to the minus three, for this one by 10 to the minus six, this one 10 to the minus nine, and this one 10 to the negative 12. Okay, so let's go fill our formula in now. So we're going to say nine times 10 to the nine multiplied. Now, this one is four. Please do not put the negative on the calculator. That is not correct. So that's going to be four times 10 to the minus nine because it's got a nanocoulomb. Okay. And then this one is a six times 10 to the minus nine. And then at the bottom, we have the distance. Now, be careful. This is in centimeters. It needs to be in meters. And some learners do struggle with that. So to convert from centimeters to meters, you are going to divide with 100. So that would give us 0, 0,1 squared. And if we had to go work this out, we should end up with 2.116 times 10 to the power of negative 5 newtons. You cannot say left or right because x is going to go towards y, but we could say something like attraction if you wanted to, but they just said calculate the magnitude. So that just means the size. All right, let's quickly take a trip into grade 10 uh, science. Question 7.2.3 is actually a grade 10 formula or a grade 10 question. It says that the charged spheres are now brought into contact or brought into contact with each other and then separated. Calculate the charge on each sphere after the separation. Okay, so we have this formula. I think they even give it to you on your formula sheet, if I remember correctly. It's just going to go um, Q1 plus Q2 over 2. Guys, you're literally finding the average. You know, like when you're finding the midpoint in analytical geometry, you're just saying uh, the first one plus the second one, dividing it by 2, and you're getting the average. Now, I always go on about why you mustn't put negatives on the in the formula, but I'm talking about this formula, and I'm talking about the E equals to KQ over R squared formula. But when we are busy with this formula, you must put the negative. So you would say minus 4 uh, times 10 to the minus 9 plus uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 9 over 2. And if you had to go work that out, that's going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And the units of that would just be coulombs. 